Hello everyone, today I will show you something really weird about color. What I'm about to show you confused many artists, maybe including you too. But before that, I have to tell you how I got here. Two days ago, I was working on this 3D scene and I have a gradient in the water that gets darker the further away it is from the camera. And like usual, I use this gradient texture which produced this nice gradient. And I plug it through a color ramp which replaced the black and white values with these colors. And I expected a uniform color blending between the colors, but then I got this weird result. The color gradient seems to have these rings in between the colors, and I couldn't figure out why this is happening. I initially thought it was something to do with my monitor, and so I desperately searched online looking for an answer. Now, usually when we are picking color, most people use the hue saturation value color picker, which basically allow us to pick RGB color in a more user-friendly way. This color picker is used in Blender, Clip Studio Paint, Photoshop, Procreate, and pretty much most of the painting software that you can think of. You can select a color using the hue circle, and then you can adjust the saturation and value of that color using this box. But with a little bit more research, I realized that RGB should not be used to mix color to begin with. To see what I mean, I'll paint some pink on my canvas. Then I'll use a soft airbrush and I'll paint this color on top. And you can see that there is a darker transition color in between these two colors. And this is a common problem with RGB, or more specifically, sRGB color space which most monitors use to display colors. This is exactly what happened when I was doing the gradient in my 3D scene where the colors would just get darker when transitioning between two colors. This also means that you might be mixing color incorrectly too. So how do we solve this problem? One solution is to convert from sRGB color space to some other color space out there that maintain the perceived lightness when transitioning color. And fortunately, I found this video from good Good nice, good nice name? Sorry if I pronounced that wrong. He introduced a perceptual color space named OK Lab. Then I read some information about it on a website and it completely shocked me. This is the color gradient for HSV color space, which, like I said before, most digital software uses. And this is the OK Lab color gradient. And by just looking at it, I can tell that it maintains the perceived lightness way better than the HSV. And my mind was blown away because I only realized this when compared side by side. This means all I have to do is to convert all my colors from sRGB to OK Lab and do the color mixing in that color space instead. So I decided to search online for a color picker that uses OK Lab color space, but from what I found, there is not a lot of good color pickers out there that uses this color space. Fortunately, apart from doing 3D, 2D, and singing, I can also do programming. So I made my own color picker and I hosted the website online so anyone can visit it and use it. It looks very similar to the HSV color picker. The only difference is that instead of value over here, it is lightness instead. Lightness basically stands for perceived lightness, which you can see over here, goes from black to white. And this makes sense because if you think about what's the brightest color that our eyes can perceive, it's obviously white. I also have this hex color input so you can import your colors into my color picker. And to demonstrate this, I painted a free frame fan art and I tried to use the color picker as much as I could. Whenever I want to maintain the lightness of the color, I'll use the OK Lab color picker. For example, on free skirt, I want to add more saturated color so that it looks a little bit more colorful. So I color pick the color and I copy the hex code. Then I paste it into my color picker and I just increase the saturation slider and move the hue a little bit. Then I just copy this resulting hex color then paste it back into my drawing program. And I can just paint with that color. I think about 9 out of 10 times, I'm pretty satisfied with the color that came from the OK Lab color picker. I can use a layer filled with white with blend mode set to color to check if the value stays the same. And I can see that the new color maintained its value pretty well. Now, if I instead use the HSV color picker to do the same thing, I drop the color, increase the saturation, 
move the hue a little bit and I ended up with this darker mushy color and when I check the values I can see that is definitely darker and now we are back to our original problem where I tried to create a nice looking gradient I have to convert the sRGB color space into OK Lab right within Blender so I made this node group that can do just that then I made a setup that mimics the color wrap and once again I'm shocked by what I saw this is the one before which uses the sRGB to blend the color and this is OK Lab the color looks so much smoother than the old one and I can proudly say that I am in love with this color space all the links including the resources and where to find the notes and the color picker are down in the description thank you so much to my patreon members for supporting me so I can continue making free stuff on youtube this is pretty much the end of the video it's a little shorter than other videos but I hope you liked it and like usual stay positive and Happy blending. See you on the next one.